It does make it interesting, though, the next time these two teams match up, how some players will feel if they get a chance to hit Aaron Rodgers, right? Like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, these type of things, when you hear things like this come out after games, fans, I mean, players have bulletin board material. They mark down things now to get them motivated for certain well, games. Me mentally, you do. That's just like what yes. Logan Wilson is talking about, you know, attacking or, or, or not attacking, but talking about Lamar Jackson being a running back playing quarterback, Lamar has filed that in his mental. Yeah, there you go. Did he go all day. Did he just go let you know? I mean, they're going to figure out what to do. That's all. Come on, man. We petty now. <laughs> People try to act like they're very bravado and, you know, hey, I, I got all the confidence in the world, but we petty. Yeah, but you 22, petty. you 22 and 5, you should just give Aaron Rodgers the pink slip to the building. 22 <laughs> and 5. That's Could you imagine man. you draft a quarterback and you have a divisional rival? <laughs> you know in advance he's going to be 22 and 5. Against that, by the way, he's 18 and five against Detroit, and his worst record. I looked this up yesterday. His it's worst record division. is 15 mm. nine and one, and that's the Vikings. The Vikings at least are just getting beaten pretty bad. 15 nine and one is a bad record, right? I mean, it's a good record the against that other good, team. I'm trying to think. The Vikings had good teams early in Aaron Rodgers' career when he took over. Yeah. They still had AP. What you say, Evan? Yeah, they had Favre, so they still. They, they were and Zimmer good. Zimmer's de remember he was given credit for the defense figured out and fifteen nine and one. But when you add it all up, Rodgers in a weak division really, he owns the whole division. Not just that's what I said. It's a weak yeah. division. Yeah. yeah, I mean think about you want to do some math. Pull up Tom Brady's twenty years in the AFC East. Hundred <laughs> percent. Tom Brady. Tom Brady might be something like one hundred nine. <laughs> because you're talking about the Jets, the Dolphins, and Deals. the Bills. They they for twenty years. Here and there, there was an okay quarterback in that division. Here and there, but it was a bad I don't run. Think, I don't think now that I'm thinking about it, I can't remember Tom Brady ever being swept by Me any team neither. in that division. He lost to the Jets once. He'll lose to the Dolphins once. The Bills might have clipped him once, but I've never. I don't remember losing like two to the Dolphins or two to the Bills. Mm. I don't remember that. It, it, can I just bring up a quick point? Because the last part of what he said was fascinating to me because I find out in sports, we, we saw it a little bit with the Mets this year. Granted, it was with their own fan base. But the last part he said is like when these athletes are screamed at by fans all game, every single week, then when they respond by saying, I still own you, it becomes like this incredible story filled with vitriol from people. We hate you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <laughs> seeing people that scream absurd-ass things yeah, at you yeah. all day. Like, you know what this dude just said about my I mom? Still, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I, I, say, I, I still own, own you, and now you're angry about it? Yeah. Get out of here. But the fans didn't really, I don't think the fans was really saying anything. They were just, Olin brought it up. I don't think the fans was really Oh, you tripping. can imagine. Key. Oh, yeah, the you fans gave crazy... him the double bird. Oh, yes. That's he why said, he an yelled, I still my... own you. They gave him the double bird. Oh, yeah, I had a North Carolina grandma give me the double bird with her daughter there. There in a North Carolina, like, I got did outfit. you deserve it? What? Yeah, did I deserve it? Yeah, because I, I own North Carolina. You should have heard. I own North Carolina when I played at Duke. That's how I felt about it. The chance in the bleachers in Yankee Stadium in the 70s here, and 80s with, like, kids, like, adults with their children, and the children are listening to the what's coming out of their parents' mouths. They're just like, that's my dad. That's my Be mom. a good role model. All right, look. So, Rodgers, like, we just mentioned Brady. In the AFC East for years, all he had, they, you know, they had a bye in the first round. They had a home playoff game in the second round. As soon as they won that, they're in the AFC Championship. It really helped Brady out. Rodgers is in a division, maybe not as weak as that for years, but a pretty weak division that he owns. So the question is this. Brady leaves the Patriots. Now that division's wide open, the yeah. AFC East, right? But if Rodgers leaves the NFC North, as many predict, who benefits the most? Which team? <sighs> I would probably think Chicago right now. Mm -hmm. I would think maybe Chicago right now, right? Because yeah, I don't man. know how I don't know how I don't know if Zim is going to be there with Kirk Cousins long term. But I think when you look at Matt Nagy, who will probably get an extension at the end of the year. Sorry, Jay. And <laughs> along with the young quarterback at Justin Fields, then yeah. And now think about it. Tom Brady has never think about this. Tom Brady has never lost to a division opponent being swept until last year, the New Orleans Saints did him in twice. Other than that, in his career, nobody's gotten him twice in the AFC East. But then, he, get him in the but AFC then East. remember, 
Brady got him got the Saints in the playoffs. Well, yeah, Brady got him so in the playoffs. Never, matter. He's never not beaten a team. He's played like at least twice in his division. But, 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 but the though, issue man. is not Tom Brady. The issue is the AFC East. It was so weak well, for so long. It's, it was weak, but at the same time, the issue is Tom Brady because you can't beat him. No, what I'm yeah, right. Of course, Brady and Rodgers are super great, and they were in weak divisions. I totally agree that the Bears benefit most guys. Think if you're a Bears fan. And this dude is 22-5 and five against you. And not only do you have good reason to believe he's leaving the division, but you draft a quarterback who falls to 11, make a deadline, make a, tr- a draft day deal, grab him. You've looked pretty good, and he doesn't even know what he's doing yet, and you've already looked pretty good, and Rodgers might leave the de- – this is Christmas come early for the Bears. Do you, is this not Christmas comes early for Minnesota and the Vikings? Like, I know every time I'm on this show – and everybody does this, even Evan. Well, that's every day. Whenever, yes, <laughs> that is every day. Fair. Wow. Every time. Well, every, every time ah, I'm on the show. Welcome, Jay ah, Williams. I would think that's Clip every that. day. Clip that and run that back as personality to open the show. Um, all I would say is every time I say Kirk Cousins, everybody goes, ah. It's like the common theme with no everybody. No sex appeal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, well, you know, it's yeah. a matter of time before that one happens again. But my thing is with Dalvin Cook, with Justin Jefferson, that receiving core, you don't think they're sitting there saying when Aaron Rodgers is all done, even if I do have a middle-of-the-pack quarterback, that we actually have the talent to surpass and win a division and go further? I, I don't Minnesota know. this year? I don't know. If Can you guys put a little done. bit of respect on what Minnesota no, is no, Jay, no, Key, Jay, doing? Jay is 100% right. Damn. The reason we're not talking Minnesota is just because they're boring. You guys like, do eh, it I don't care a lot about Kirk Cousins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just don't care yeah. a lot about Minnesota. He doesn't it's move not, the needle for you, Key. No, it's not even that. I've watched him play over the last several years, and they continue to keep extending him, and I don't understand why, and they're in the same position that they were in before with Case Keenum, a guy that is now a backup that – should still be the starter, in my opinion, in Minnesota based on how far he took them, and they're in the same position that they were with Case Keenum. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.